Minecraft doesn't avoid double negatives. No, no sir. This is episode 27 of Brian playing Vinyl Fantasy 1.1.1. And wow, 27 is a perfect cube. My age, 36, is a perfect square. It seems like all is in harmony with the universe. In this episode, we will spend most of our time in the Christmas tree area, but we'll also take a detour into the Mountains of Blood. Some good things are going to happen this time around. I've been a little under the weather, and so I also had a few hard cuts uh, in the editing of this video to edit out some of my talking and coughing. But yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy the episode because good stuff happens. Let's get started. There are still some fires burning behind the water column, but amazingly, I believe the diamond block is still there, and so that is happy, and so I may still be able to fetch that. I haven't upgraded any diamond tools or even been using my enchanted stuff, really, uh, simply because I was saving it for if I encounter a really hard area, but I can imagine also possibly not using it. By the time you're into kind of iron tools and things, you're already in pretty good shape. And so, yeah, we'll see if I end up actually using that stuff. In any case, I will let this burn out, and then we will head back to the tree and start looking inside some of these presents. I bet you one of them contains a birdcage. Oh, and also from this vantage point, you can see the area that I just went down and lit. And it looks like I'm almost to the area marker. I didn't re realize it, and presumably that will read Area Mountains of Blood. Looks cool. It looks like possibly the gifts are going to burn down as well, and so I'm just going to go ahead and wait for them to burn down, and in the meantime, I'll try to head over into the Bloody Mountains, or whatever they were called. I can't remember. Mountains of Blood, I think, is the name of the area. Area. Mountains of Blood. The exit is as important as the entrance. That's what she said. I kind of saw that coming. Um, that's probably also what she said. Um, let's see... It looks like, is this red wool, I think, as well as netherrack? I can't tell if there's supposed to be some pattern to it. I guess I just need to head over there and try to light some up. And I did not bring enough blocks, but I will find a way to get rid of that problem soon enough. All right, behind the red wool, there's netherrack, and that's easy to tunnel through. And it means I'll gather plenty of blocks. And so I'm going to tunnel up, mostly because the higher I get, the better vantage point I'll have to see if there's a particular direction I'm supposed to go. I hear an Enderman. Right now I only hear one. Oh, and I hear a skeleton as well, and it appears that I'm coming out onto the top of somewhere with a bunch of mobs. All right, so welcome to the party. Hello, zombie. You can be part of the party that enjoys a taste of my sword. As so often is the case. Oh, and there's a skeleton right up here. Oops! Don't knock me off. I can knock you off, though. Boom! Boom! And I think he's still over there somewhere. But we'll go get him in a moment. Where'd you go, Skelly? Ooh, there you are. Alright, now you are dead, sir. And, yes, this um, landscape seems as though it will be challenging to traverse, but at the same time, I do want to get to, there's a creeper down there, higher ground to get a better vantage point. And so, I guess let's go ahead and switch to nether rack, since I'm going to have tons and tons of it. And, yeah, just try to build a way over to somewhere. There's a fair chance that I'll get knocked off at some point. But if I do, we'll deal with that when the time comes. All right, and here is some more random red wool. Yeah, I can't tell if the red wool is supposed to be a pattern or something. I see what looks like a little wooden shack over there. It kind of reminds me of the wooden shack that had TNT in the ceiling back at the uh, that first area that I went to. The one with the snow golems. can't remember the name of that ice area right now. But there was a wooden shack over there that I found that had some loot, and it had TNT in the roof. And from here, that looks similar. And I'm not sure if I should just try to bridge across the next mountain or try to dig around. It does look like, well, I guess there's just redstone torches kind of scattered all through these mountains, offering a tiny bit of light. And so I think I do want to head over in that direction. 
And in order to do that, I guess I'll bridge across some mountains and we'll see, see how that goes, see how I fare. All right, I think the sun is rising over there. Yeah, and as a result, I can see kind of the outline of these mountains, and they look pretty awesome, actually. In any case, I'm still trying to head down there, because so far that's the only kind of lit up area that I've seen. All right, I made a little bit of progress into the mountains, but then I was coming back over here to get some more supplies, and I noticed that it appears that the fire over here has burned itself out. And so I would really like to check out these gifts over here. And so that's what I'm going to do next. And I think I'm going to use the water that is still going down here as my way back down. And then I will build some kind of ladder system or something to get back up, or I could even just swim back up the waterfall. And I would like to get on one of the higher gifts first and try to do this as kind of a top-down thing. I'm not sure how easy that is going to be to do. Uh, it looks like this will get me on one of the lower gifts. It looks like they're pretty well lit on top, and so maybe I'll just hop down here and see how this goes. Not sure how it'll go, but sometimes you just gotta try. And so, here we go. I'm in a waterfall, and I am standing on a leaf, and I'm in a waterfall again! Hello! Alright, and it looks reasonably bright. You can see what got burnt. Oh my gosh, TNT! <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm gonna have to be a little careful over here. Because obviously there's TNT inside these gifts. I'm really surprised then that not only that this didn't all burn down, and I hear a spider, and so I need to be worried about where there may be enemies nearby or possibly spawners inside the gifts. Seems like that would be appropriate somehow. Yes, there is just tons of TNT rigged inside many of these gifts. And I'm almost tempted to just detonate it. Uh, wow. Yep, you just dig a little ways inside, and there's TNT. And so I'm guessing inside one of the Yuja's gifts, possibly, maybe there would be... Gosh, there's just TNT hanging everywhere. Hmm. Hmm. And given the likelihood of the tree burning down earlier, I'm really surprised that none of this went... Oh, is this the birdcage in the middle? That might be surrounded by bedrock, kind of? Maybe? I'm not sure... In any case, there's definitely half slabs here. And right now, I don't hear any bad guys, other than that one spider that I heard. What did I see over there? There is something spawning, I think. All right, I need to check out what might be spawning over here, because that would be bad. It's probably spiders. Yes, I see a spider. Okay, so I'm guessing there is a spider spawner somewhere around here. It appears to be cave spiders. And I'm going to need to find that, and so I'm going to go away from where I think it was spawning. And just see if I can get a look over there to see if the spawner might be inside this gift, or another gift, or where it might be. And as for the TNT, I mean, I guess I could detonate it, but it seems like that'll just make a bigger mess of this place. And I don't feel like trying to go down there and collect it, because that seems like it's going to be as deadly as anything. And so I'll just disable some bits of it. All right, there's definitely bad guys in here. There appears to be like a hole in the ground that just leads down to the void over there. Um, hmm. I do not know what is the best way to tackle this. Suggestions? Thoughts? Comments? Okay, I thought about it for a moment, and I think I would just like to find out for sure one way or the other whether this is the birdcage. And I think the only good way to do that is to just try to hop in and take a look. And so, unfortunately, I'm sure there's going to be spawners probably on kind of all sides of it. And there's also TNT that who knows if there's traps to go off. And sure enough, yes, I see some redstone torches. And I, oh, I see there's a chest and a marker. Oh, there's a bunch of interesting looking stuff over here. I see more spiders spawning. I wonder if the spawners are inside that thing and that's not actually the birdcage. Oh, and there's some more... There's a sign and a button over there, which I wonder if that's going to detonate everything. Oh, I've got so many questions. Oh, and I see more signs over there. I wonder if they're kind of like tags for the Christmas gifts. All right, I'm immediately abandoning my initial plan, which was to try to jump down here. And instead, now, I'm coming up over here to read the signs. Do not open ever. Press button to open. 
So presumably that'll just like detonate everything. I'm really kind of tempted to do it. <laughs> um, yeah, because I think it may bring clarity to this area. But I would like to look on top of some of the other gifts for... I, mm, should I try to go after the loot chest that's down there? I don't even know if it's a loot chest. It could also be a trap. It's right next to the bedrock. Uh, I would like to see what the signs down there say, though. Oh, dear. All right, yeah, I'm going to see if I can get down here and see what the signs say. And I'm going to try not to do anything that would set off a trap. And, of course, I'm going to try to stay alive. But my expectation is that all of these good intentions will be for naught, and I will somehow end up both dying and explodifying the whole region. But if instead I did some kind of cheap thing and just tried to avoid the whole area, then where's the fun in that? You guys are here for entertainment, and I would like to provide it to you. And sometimes doing that... Alright, I can hear definitely spiders inside these gift boxes, who seem to be climbing the walls trying to track me and then falling back down and taking fall damage. All right, and I'm just about where somewhere, there's enough light out here that I think enemies will have a hard time spawning. And so that's very much in my benefit at the moment. There's the area marker. I'm really afraid that even opening a chest is going to update something, but So far, so good. Milk and cookies, I see, left for Santa. That makes sense. Very traditional. And then there's another chest over here. Gosh, this is so scary. That also has milk and cookies. I don't really need more. Um, all right, and then there seems to be a door and a pressure plate that opens the door. Should I go inside the door, or do we think that will also set off? Even if it sets stuff off... I might be safe, because it's inside bedrock? Oh crap. Alright, well now I need to stand back for a moment and both assess where that spider came from to see if I am in continual danger, as well as to regain some hearts for a moment. But since that thing is inside bedrock, possibly if I step on the pressure plate and open the door and walk in, it's possible that even if everything got set off over here, I'll be inside a bedrock room and so I would be safe. And I'm still curious if possibly that is the birdcage. And so, I don't think I'm carrying anything important on me, per se. Milk and cookies. Yeah, and so I think, I think I'm going to just have to walk in and see what happens. So, here goes nothing. Oops, I can't even get to the door because of these stupid things, which look like they might set off the trap. Here we go. All right, I'm inside. And that appears to be a silverfish block because nothing's ever easy. All right, and so I will accept the fact that a bunch of silverfish... Oh my gosh, it's spawners. All right, you see them. I'm going to try to avoid the silverfish. Crap. Which is going to be next to impossible. I'm going to try to put down... There's a fair bit of light in here. I did not bring a flint and steel to try to get rid of the silverfish that way. Can I open the chest? Yes! It's Music Distraud! I will just see if I can escape with my life somehow. Uh, this door shut behind me, and I don't have a way to... Oh, there was a pressure plate in here. Right. And so, possibly, I can use the pressure plate that's in here in order to reopen the door. This is a cleverly constructed type of trap slash non-trap, but unfortunately with the silverfish in the way, I don't know that... Ah, oh dear. Let's try to take out some spawners first. All right, there's one spawner. There's another spawner. There's another spawner. Silverfish are a pain. All right, there's another spawner. Let's see if I can possibly... Okay, walk over here. Oh, the silverfish are jumping on me now. Hold on. Oh, gosh. Uh, and I'm worried that killing or breaking more... Ah, oh, darn it. Silverfish are going to kill me if I'm not careful. I'm worried that basically the silverfish may end up like if more silverfish blocks break, there may be redstone torches attached to them, and it may end up like setting off more traps. 
but I can't reach these other spawners without getting past the silverfish, and so I'm not sure if I should just hit them and go for it. Oh, I wish I brought a flint and steel. Let's see if I can get over here again. Darn it. Ah, uh, now we just had another silverfish. Alright, I'm just gonna have to kill him. Let's hope for the best. So the good news is, I did not bring a million other silverfish to life. I'm gonna continue taking out spawners. I'm gonna put, move this torch over here. I want as much light as possible, even though there's already glowstone here. Oops. Get rid of that spawner. Can't tell if there might be another spawner behind the thing over here. But now I can finally put down the pressure plate on the ground here. And now, unfortunately, there's going to be cave spiders out there. I didn't bring anything. Oh, I have milk. Right, milk and cookies. Milk heals the poison that cave spider spawners give you, cave spiders give you. And so if I make a run for it out here and basically try to get back up my staircase and drink milk as I need to, I think I have a shot. So let's do that. Wow. This is going pretty well so far. I'm kind of in shock. Okay. Now, please, nothing set off the TNT. Pretty please. And now I just need to get up my water stream and then swim back up there, maybe? Or even pillar up? I don't have enough bricks to pillar up anymore. Uh, yes, I guess I'm going to try to swim up and see if I can get back up. All right, I'm going to swim it. Okay, and I swum back to the top, and I have Strahd in hand. That almost feels like it was too easy. One should never utter the words too easy on a map like this, but wow. Um, yep, alright. I will just say that was pretty cool, and see you guys back at the Victory Monument. Alright, here we are at the Jukebox Monument, and Strahd apparently goes right here. And now we are up to one, two, three, four, five of the eleven records. As well as I've already gotten three of the six bonus blocks. So we're on the order of being halfway through this map, which is pretty awesome. This has been, I'm sure, a very short episode so far, I think, because I didn't do a whole lot. Uh, nevertheless, I think I might go ahead and end it here. I'll let you guys listen to the music Strahd by C418, as I do a little bit of kind of farming and tending up to the Victory Monument stuff. And yeah, then we'll see you guys next time.
All right, that was Strahd. That was our fifth record disc. Let's continue on towards the Mountains of Blood for our next episode. Hope you guys are having a good day. See you next time.